All right, guys, welcome back to our tutorial series. Up to this point, we've worked on endpoints to verify a user's email, to register a user. So now I want us to have the Swagger documentation just so we can already see what exactly we are building in the backend. So we're going to use this module called DRF YASG or YASG, however you want to read it. So this actually gives us a way to document the APIs. It actually gives us two ways. So we can use Swagger UI. And guys, you can actually come in here and read more about what's possible with the, with the API. But I'm going to show you how to set it up and how to use it. But of course, there will always be more in the documentation. So yeah, you can see that you can use Redoc and Swagger UI. We'll use Swagger in this one because I think it looks cooler. <laughs> All right, so let's install the package. So this is going to be pip install package name. So once we have that, we need to add it to our installed apps. So now in our settings.py, which is right here, we need to come in here and also add it. Good. So once that's done, now they give us an example of how to actually set up the, the, the URL. So for the URLs for the documentation. So I'm going to actually copy everything here. And then so we can have somewhere to start from. So in the main application URLs routing, I'm going to bring them in here. So we'll keep the imports for now. Then you see they define a schema view. Then they use it, they use this schema view, get schema view function. And then it takes in this configuration. So the title, you can call it like income expenses API. V1 is OK. This description is OK. <laughs> Then you define your terms of policy. So I'm going to change this one to app. Our app.com. Then this can be at expenses, local. But it can be anything, your company name, your <laughs> whatever. So now that you have that, so you configure it that way. And after that, now we need to configure our URL. So I'm going to copy this one out. We actually bring it in. I'm gonna copy everything here. Then I will delete this. So down here, I will bring them in, and then I will swap the URLs for path. So I'm gonna remove this regex stuff. So I only want to keep the Swagger UI, so I am as well remove this, but. Take some time to look at how the Redoc doc, Redoc works. Actually, let me actually bring it in so we can look at it. Why not? All right, so let's keep Redoc and then Swagger. So I can remove this, remove this. So I can just do this. Then I'm going to remove the first one. So we can have the Swagger link and then the Redoc link. But I want the Swagger to be on the main application landing page so I'll save that and now if you come back run our application again run server you can see it's back so when I click on the link hmm. yeah so this one is not actually coming through so let's see why that would be the case so I'm gonna oh oh there's an issue so we are actually doing this in the wrong file sorry about that guys so we need to have this configuration in our main application routing file so in this urls.py this is where we want to have this so i will bring it in there and then i will have to bring in what is it for our configuration so cut it from here and then make sure you have it here let's bring in our imports let's bring in our imports up to here okay so that imports everything we had already configured the url parts so if you come back to the app and reload here you can see that yeah we have our income expenses api looking good looking good so even here we can actually try it out with the registration this actually execute it's taking long yeah so you can see that the user gets created we get the the results if we try to use a user that already existed, see we get the errors correctly. Looking good, looking good. But now what I want to show you is on the endpoint to verify the email, you can see that there is nothing, 
nothing to help us to verify the email from this documentation. So actually I paused the testing of the other video just so I could show it to you here. So for now to be able to do that, we need to have a, serial, a serializer class that exposes some fields to the views. So, so the way it works is we are going to need to create a serializer class. So here in our authentication serializers, I'm going to have a, a verification serializer. So class email verification verification serializer. So this is going to be inheriting from serializers, model serializer. And then we want to define the token field because we want the user to be able to see that there is a token needed on the documentation. So here, this is going to be serializers dot char field. Now we can give like a max length of like five 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 because those tokens. All right, so we can define a max length for the token. Then we need to define a class meta. So we link this one to the user model. So model equals user. And then when it comes to the fields, this is what we will want to expose. So here we can do fields will be only the token for now. All right. So once we have this, now we need to import it, of course, in the views, views.py. We need to here set up a serializer class, serializer underscore class. This is going to be equal to that. Let's make sure we import it here and save. So once we have this and come back and reload here and click there, you can see that still there isn't, there isn't a lot. So we can see basically like what gets sent back, but there is no way to send it. So you already know that we are go it's going to be, it's going to need us to send in the, in the parameters. So somewhere like here. So we need to add a way for user to be able to add those custom parameters. All right, so for us to do that, go back to our views.py. So first thing we are going to need to import from API view here. So since it's gonna be a special case and not like generic like the other ones, so we are going to import an API view from, from REST framework. So actually we are here, we can import views. Okay. So here we can do views with API view and now once we have this, this can give us access to to add those things, but we still need to do some more some more customization. Right here on this method, we need to tell Swagger which which fields it should create here. So for us to be able to do that, I'm going to import something. So from DRF, it's called DRF Yasuk.utils, import something called Swagger Auto Schema. All right, so once we import that right here on our method, we need to decorate this one with swagger auto schema. And then you can see that we specify some options in this. So one option we're going to specify is going to be manual parameters. And this is gonna be actually, so this is always a list so we can supply different things. So here we need to specify a parameter with its configuration. So here, I can put something like token param config and now let's define this. So here it's gonna be token param config. So this is gonna be equal to so this we need to we need to also bring in open API because these have to be before the open API standard. So here so from that one import open API. So let's compose our config using open API. So you can do open API and then we need to pass in open API dot parameter. And now the parameter we need to give a name, which the name will be token. And then the next thing is going to be where we want it to be. So here we can have an in. So in will be equal to open API in query. Okay, but you can see all the options that are possible. So we also need, we can give it a description so users can know what it's about. So description, and then we define a type. So here we can add type equals. So we can also use open API to access the types that are variable. 
then this is gonna be a type string. So now that we are wrapping our decorator here, we have defined it there. Now we can come back and set now the application is back on the endpoint. When I click there, you can see that now we have somewhere to enter the token. So if I click try it out, we should be able to see that we can now enter something and then click execute. So you notice that when I submit something that's not a variable and click execute, we get invalid token. But let's try to use our token here. So I'm going to come and copy this. Come back here, supply a correct one, then click execute. So you can see that it expired, but let's try to create a new user. So down here, I'm going to use this email. Let's send a 100 at gmail.com then the username can be the sender and the password that so notice that the first case we're able to know that the token is is invalid and now it's saying us that it's expired so now we need to test for the only the case where the the token is 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 valid <laughs> so let me use a user that actually i know exists so i do christ truly gmail same username same password then I'll click execute. Oh, this user exists. So let me actually clear out some of these users. So down here, we can enter the Python shell. So we can interact with the database. So manage.py, Python manage.py shell. And now we can import the model from authentication dot models import user so now we can do something like user dot objects dot all delete all of them let's see that should be objects not object okay so that's did nine users so i'm gonna quit this run back the application oh sorry run back the application and now let's try again click execute so it's going to now go ahead okay so now you can see that we get a 201 and now when i go back to my email now you can see that i have a new email and then it has a token so i'm going to copy the token real quick so copy it uh i'm going to copy the token real quick so i'm going to go to our api here reload it and then I'm going to go to email verify. And now that we've set up a field, I can now paste our token here. So when I click execute, look at what happens. We can see that now the user is successfully activated. All right, so looking good. So for us to verify that the user is activated, actually, we can come in here to our shell. I'm gonna cut this one out. Then I'm gonna do Python, manage it to a shell. So you understand that at first, in our models, when we create a user, is verified is always false. You can see the default value. So let's try to query for this user. So here we can do from authentication with models import user. So once we have the user, now we can do user with objects with get. So I want to get by email, so we can do email equals. So my email is this, it's just the one I just used to sign up. Gmail.com. And then we want the is verified key. So we can do dot is verified. So now you can see that it's true, meaning that we are able to verify this user. And now in the next one, we'll go ahead and log them in. We'll go ahead and log them in into the application. So if you enjoyed the video, give it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you can keep in the loop as we build more cool stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one.